I just don't understand how he still has a license. How is he still practicing law? Lauren Taylor has a very good question. It's been nearly two years since former clients of Houston family lawyer Rick Ramos filed multiple complaints with the Texas State Bar. Somebody needs to stop this man. He's still practicing law and taking clients. That, that That's absurd to me. In fact, since those complaints, Rick Ramos has been involved in more than 50 new lawsuits just in Harris County, all while preparing for his own felony trial on domestic violence charges. Almost half of the new lawsuits aren't family law cases. Ramos now represents dozens of victims in the Asteroid concert disaster. The show must go on, but the show must go on doesn't mean people gotta die at your show. While we wait for the state bar to do its job, we help the Rem family recover almost $25,000 in legal fees from Ramos. I burst into tears <laughs> because that's money that I really thought was a, a loss. And it's a huge amount of money. And when you hear Lauren Taylor's story, we think you'll agree that she's due a refund too, even though Rick Ramos wasn't her lawyer. He was the lawyer for the father of her son. Another Harris County custody fight that's dragged on way too long. This last round, I've spent over $100,000. That's money down the drain. And you can blame Rick Ramos for that. I was, hor I was numb. Ramos was supposed to provide orders for Judge Gloria Lopez to sign to end the latest legal battle between Taylor and her ex-boyfriend. The paperwork was due on February 12, 2021. And when it didn't arrive, Judge Gloria Lopez dismissed the case. I think that there's nothing that she could do at that point. I think she's been as fair as she can be for what's going on with the system that she's working within. For Ramos, the remedy didn't cost him a single penny. It's not his money. He got his client to simply file more legal papers, start the case all over. Three days after the judge ruled that it was out of her jurisdiction, he filed a new lawsuit and it's like starting all over like Groundhog Day. Excuse me, where's everybody going? It's Groundhog Day. The movie was funny, but in real life, it's anything but. Battles in family court can get very expensive. Somebody else's lawyer can run you through the ringer and literally make it to where you can't, you have to decide if you're gonna pay your mortgage or pay lawyers and lose your, or lose your kid. Imagine if all the money you spent was wasted. Rick Ramos had been given a whole month to file the paperwork. And when he dropped the ball, he had to blame someone. So guess what? He started blaming mother nature. None of us here in Houston will forget Winter Storm Uri, but that wasn't the reason the orders weren't turned in on February 12th as they were required to be. Well, the final order was due the day before or the morning before the court even closed. So you could have filed it electronically. Winter Storm Uri killed more than 200 people in Texas and left millions in the dark. We checked ourselves. The rolling blackouts, they didn't start until the 13th. Nice try, Mr. Ramos. An email reveals the real reason you missed the deadline. The work just hadn't gotten done. And the consequence for this Houston realtor was another year in court and a hell of a lot more money to her lawyers. Other people are suffering like I'm suffering. Lauren Taylor now shares the frustration so many of our family and justice families do. Are you gonna put money in your son's college account or are you gonna go fight and argue and maybe get nowhere? Grady's mom was never married to his father and when he was just a baby, an incident at the Blue Lagoon scared this young mother to death. When my son was three months old, he was left in a bar parking lot on Woody Road uh, at 11 o'clock at night while his dad was inside drinking. For years, dad didn't fight to get primary custody, but then he got married and the fight for custody was suddenly on. They gave you the hard part for the first seven years with an infant and a toddler and exhaustion, trying to run a business. You can understand the bitterness. For years, she had essentially been a single mom, but the reality of making a baby includes the reality that you must share the baby whenever the request from the other party comes in. You know, I raised a baby by myself. I was running a business. I have a successful real estate business. But now the successful Houston realtor wonders why family courts don't have the tough ethics rules she has to follow in her business. Another very good question. And it's just amazing to me that we have more 
consumer protections for houses than we do kids. Along the way, Taylor had been sent by her lawyer Kelly Fritch at the time to talk to this guy, psychologist Kit Harrison. What she didn't know was that Harrison had once sued HBO for libel after a documentary painted an unflattering portrait of his role in a child custody fight. I asked, are you representing the my the Grady's dad or are you a neutral party? I asked him to clarify if he was a psychologist or if he was an expert witness or what was he? And he said, I'm here to help your son. Taylor later discovered Harrison was a paid expert hired by Rick Ramos, not a neutral party. His testimony was stricken from the custody battle record in March of 2020 by Judge Lopez. It was used as a character assassination on me. They, tr they attempted to do that. It wasn't successful, but that's what the attempt was. Houston attorney Donna Lelou was appointed to represent Lauren's son in the case. She got $30,000 roughly to see our son twice. In January 2021, Taylor's lawyers complained that Lelou hadn't seen the boy in person in 12 months, hadn't spoken to him in seven months. Lauren Taylor has now spent four Christmas holidays preparing for another court hearing. She now wants to fight for the Family Wizard app the courts use to control communications between parents, to fight for the dad to provide life insurance for their son, fight to settle who gets custody in the summer so that vacations can be planned and above all, fight for peace. She wishes her son could talk directly to the judge. We hear that a lot. But under Texas law, the judge is not required to hear from children under 12. And often they don't want to because they're concerned about parental alienation. He wants to advocate for himself. He's requested that and when he gets denied, then he feels like, and he says to me, nobody can help me. Lauren Taylor also hopes for an end to the money train. Luckily, Judge Lopez is one of those judges who understands that is one of the biggest problems in our family courts. Family lawyers are often paid by the hour and have no incentive to end these fights over children. And that doesn't include, of course, the extra costs of a lawyer's screw up. Rick Ramos got paid either way. And maybe that's something else state lawmakers should fix. Then I bet those delays they won't keep happening. Well, I think the legislature needs to create a commission for children. Whether it's CPS kids or kids that are in custody disputes, we have a we have a commission for real estate, we have a commission for houses. Why don't we have a commission for kids?